Welcome everyone to EA Global Summit 2022. This is Sujat from EA Global Summit organizing team. It's our privilege to have Jan Dale live day in our presence. Jan works mostly involves model based system engineering and technical management at various stages of life cycle of big infrastructure systems such as tunnels, water surge barriers and metros. Presenting Sigma a system engineering workbench and I also thank everyone for your interest in joining the session. For your kind information that we will be muting all the participants throughout the session so please use the chat window to drop your questions to the speakers your queries will be answered at the end of the session we request everyone to visit the allotted microsoft teams channel to communicate with jan and the other ea practitioners after the session jan and the other speakers accepted to stay in the channel to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion and answer all your queries the link to the ms team channel will be posted in the chat window for your quick reference if you have any difficulties in connecting to Teams, please let us know through the chat window or write. Okay, welcome everybody. I hope you can see my screen, my presentation. Um, at registrations uh, at EA Global Summit or report to EA Global Summit 2022. Without any further ado, I'll request John to session. All right. Um, I hope everybody can see the presentation. Um, welcome everybody and thank you for attending this presentation about the uh, Sigma, uh, a model-based system engineering workbench for the infrastructure and industrial domain. Uh, my name is uh, Jan Liefde. Uh, I'm working as a senior system engineer uh, in the info and the industrial domain. And I strongly believe that a model-based approach um, help us to work together from a single source of truth uh, and will minimize the risk uh, on schedule and budget difference during the system life cycle. The presentation I, I like to uh, yeah, present three topics. First of all, uh, an introduction. Uh, motivation why we have uh, developed uh, uh, the workbench itself uh, after that i will give you some some insights in the development of sigma and at the end i give you also some examples uh, uh, where you can see the structure and uh, how it looks like first of all infrastructure systems these are the, the systems you see everywhere where you live. Uh, you see the movable water barriers, uh, the metro systems, uh, the locks, tunnels, bridges, movable bridges, uh, but also dikes and these kind of uh, yeah. large systems that, uh, that uh, protect ourselves or give us some convenience uh, in uh, living in the country where we are. Uh, first of all, I, I'd like to give you some context uh, for, uh, for the infrastructure systems. Infrastructure systems have always a high uh, political and public interest. It's always in the spotlight. If the movable water barrier is uh, not working, we have a security uh, a safety problem in the Netherlands uh, by flooding the, the lower lands. We have to deal with long life cycles of the system, 80 years, more than that. Um, but not only the, the long life cycle of the system itself, but also the shorter life cycle of system parts of it. And we have to deal within the workbench with uh, different uh, engineering domains, uh, civil, mechanical, electrical, industrial automation, uh, environmental uh, uh, people, project management, or <clears throat> contract management. Another um, thing that we have to deal with is the direct or indirect impact on the environment. Uh, nice views where, we, where, where you live somewhere in the country. Pollution, and fine dust and, and these kind of things. And we have also to deal with impact from the environment, salt water, winter, temperature. Uh, and there's also a strong focus on, on safety, zero casualties and, and availability 24-7. And in the projects, there are many different suppliers involved. Uh, 
Now, today's practice, we, we work in silos. That's the normal way of working within uh, these kind of projects. And uh, they all make the, the design the documents or uh, project management documents, but still, still in silos. And the result is then that we have created a black hole and we put all the documents in and we don't, it's very difficult to, to, to find the, the right information within the black hole. What, what are the issues we see today? Um, information duplications. Uh, looking at um, the, the projects at the, at the moment, thousands of documents are created. So we multiply uh, documents are the same kind of information, same information. So if you change something, it's not always um, done in, the, in, in, all the, in all the documents. So we have information lost during these, cha these changes. It's difficult to get access to the information. Searching within documents that not not a very nice uh, exercise. And the change of information from the documents is by using exports or copy paste. And at the end, we have a lack of tra traceability. It's also that there are many different data sources are used uh, for calculations, uh, the documents itself, uh, databases with the uh, configuration uh, data, and these data sources are not connected to each other. So when we like to have, to, we have the intention to change something in the system, and we have a lack of, lack of insights of the impact of it. <laughs> and it's still discipline-based. So what we try to achieve, that's uh, we're going from the document center to the model center. So, uh, by the model centric, documents still exist, but the source of these documents is in the model. So, information is only stored uh, once, and uh, not many times. So, we have uh, no more uh, duplication of information, or less duplication of information than uh, today practice. <coughs> so, and by model by system measuring is also uh, uh, exercised in the in, in today's project, but we see some kind of issues over there. Uh, it's mostly uh, high level design, so we still have focus on producing documents and not on producing a model that solves the problem, and it's focused mainly on, on, on defining functions. Objects are, are, are not. Uh, are only partly modeled, so we don't have any constraints, properties, requirements is not, not right stored. So we still have a lack of traceability. Another uh, topic what we see is that there are no distinction between the problem and the solution domain. Problems are, uh, are <coughs> used as, an, as, a, as a solution, or solutions as, are used as a problem. So we have to, uh, to divide that. And language, uh, especially uh, things like CSML, UML, these kind of things are not always readable for domain engineers. So the big question is, can we create a workbench where people in the engineering and asset management domain of ecosystem can collaborate? Uh, and what do we mean by engineering and asset domain, all the different uh, domain experts? have to collaborate. That will be the challenge. So if you look at, at the, the system life cycle, uh, then we see a very short period of time in the design and implementation of the project. Uh, that's what we call the Greenfield project. And mostly five years, something like that. And we have a very long operational time. Uh, eight years, 100 years. And if, if you look at the asset management, they are only involved um, halfway, if you we, if we are lucky, halfway in the design and implementation phase. Maintenance is involved 
a little bit later. But they have, both of these have to deal with the operational effects. They are responsible for it, that the system will deliver the capabilities. So, if you look from a model uh, a point of view, we have a project model that's used in the, in the design and implementation phase. And we have an asset management model that's used during the whole life cycle of the system. That's what, what we like to, uh, to achieve at the end. So the project model is just part of the asset management model. And during the operational phase, there can be many project uh, projects to, uh, to change the, the operational system. So we have to deal with, the, from a model point of view, we have to deal with a lot of uh, these project models. So we have to support then the engineering flow. Um, when we start, we have to, to define the process flow, the block flow, and the asset analysis uh, from a point of uh, operational uses. After that, we have to deal with the basic and detailed uh, design. And we have to uh, define the function flow, system structure. We have to define uh, uh, the, the interfaces and manage them, information flow, but also uh, things for the domain experts. And the main engine is piping and instrumentation, uh, online schemes for the energy guys, batch engineering from, from the process, industrial automation uh, for, for safety and reliability. We have to deal with uh, failure mode and effect analysis, fault rate analysis, and for the integration uh, guys, we have to we have to do the cable management. Achieve that. We have to, to make the test preparation, test case, procedures, reports, and at the end we have to deliver and uh, keep it actual from the for the system configuration. And it's very nice that we are doing engineering, but we have to do also with the, the, the technical management, the engineering management, workflow management. From a single source of truth, uh, we like to work together in, in not depending on the location, uh, we have to uh, to have capabilities like integral review uh, possibilities, discussions uh, for the project. Over the projects, uh, we have to build up a library so we can re reuse uh, elements. We have to support risk management, change management, and issue management. And uh, from uh, Another point of view that we have to uh, to sign information uh, that's sent over to, for for example, suppliers or uh, regulations. We have to uh, generate documents that you can sign. From an asset management uh, point of view, we have to we have to we have to give them for a very long time asset information. Uh, what are the design decisions we have built a system for? How is the operational user's intent? Uh, what are the hazards and what are the mitigations? What are the failure modes? How can we detect them and how can we mitigate them? Uh, a fault tree for your reliability, interfaces, the test information, and at the end also the traceability between everything. So we have a very big challenge to uh, to build up uh, workmen for the, for all these these guys and all these kind of information. So I'd like to give you some uh, some insight in the development of uh, uh, of Sigma the the, the workmen that we have created. And uh, I'd like to start. How did we manage it? Now we use Scrum to to manage the the, the development of uh, of the system. We build up a backlog uh, uh, on the sprints. We did uh, <coughs> we did it, uh, two weeks uh, sprint reviews with uh, some kind of customers, and we update the status. So I hope we are we are always in control then in that way. And it looks right. So we have created uh, a product that you can use. So first of all, we have to, to, to 
takes on the design approach. Uh, therefore, we use the, 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 the some kind of framework that's uh, documented in the, in, the, in the book, Demystified System Engineering. And it goes from uh, compliance to approach. Uh, we have to deal with a goal. We have to visualize things and we have to implement it in some kind of tool that we are, uh, intend to use. Uh, all, all these, these things you will uh, you will see in the next uh, next slides. So first of all, to which standards should we be compliant or, or partly be compliant? So for the the, the workbench itself, we use the ISO uh, 52 uh, system engineering architecture description standard. For <clears throat> For the process, we use um, the methods and tools for model-based system and software engineering. So we, we try to be uh, compliant to uh, international standards, but also to uh, to other standards that are used within other industries, such as metric grid or uh, the Dodo standard. So first of all, we have to, to, to look who are the users? Well, what do we think the users are uh, using these, these workbench? Okay, we have, we have engineers, domain system engineers. We have management, uh, not only technical, but also project management. Contracting, uh, supply and acquisition, asset management, and maintenance, uh, safety and quality. We have to deal with verification and validation. That's very important in the, in the infrastructure systems. And information management. These are the, 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 the large groups of people um, that we think are the intended users of, of the workplace itself. So we have to define the, the, the process based on, on our pillars, the planning, the the engineering design modeling for supporting the design and support for uh, support planning design and modeling <laughs> for some kind of ont ontology we use the the, the approach uh, from the, the the book system engineering and third edition from from john old that give a, a broad uh, insight in uh, ontology that we use, not for building up the the, the, the system itself, the, the workbench, but for using it uh, in, in the working field. <coughs> so we build up also an ontology for the workbench. Um, and that's, that's very interesting because we, we're using uh, standard CSML, that's uh, a common language within uh, the infrastructure system and uh, design at the moment. Uh, we intend to use enterprise architect. And we look, okay, what, what kind of artifacts we need to work with? So we divide it in, in three groups, uh, CSML, enterprise architect, and the relationships. So CSML are the green box. Uh, enterprise architect are the are the, the blue box. Artifacts that are uh, available within the, these kind of languages. And we miss some things. And these are the yellow boxes and the yellow lines. And that's what we have uh, integrated within the workbench in different uh, toolboxes and different diagrams. <coughs> We have to, to look at the, at the more precise uh, intended user side. And we have look at all the different groups that we've mentioned that I've mentioned before. So from the management uh, group of people who are intended to use it, uh, project managers, risk managers, configuration, environmental manager. Uh, we have to deal with the verification and validation users, VV uh, manager. The test managers, but also the test engineers, for example, um, information management. These are uh, a more precise look at, at the different uses of uh, 
of the workbench itself. So <laughs> we build up some a few points um, related to these uh, to these users, and we give them uh, some kind of relationship uh, between the different viewpoints, and that that will be the start of uh, of the structure of the framework itself, with it be integrated in the workbench. <coughs> So another point that we have to look: what kind of systems will or can be modeled within with the workbench? As I mentioned, the heuristics are like movable bridges, locks, uh, movable water barriers, tunnels, uh, metro systems. That uh, are the intended systems uh, that we like to model. So. When we have defined the, the, the viewpoints itself, we have also defined the views from the different perspectives of the users. So we make for every uh, user the different views uh, with a small description and a relationship to the structure itself. If you look in, a, in other, some other sheets further on in the presentation. Okay, what kind of models are users interested? Okay, as I mentioned before, we have uh, two kinds of projects, Greenfield and Brownfield projects. Uh, and what we see in practice is that uh, there's only interested uh, in user only interested in descriptive models or top-down approach. Uh, I will look the system in uh, in the future, analyze the models. Okay, let's think about uh, failure modes, hazard analysis, and all these kind of things. Uh, interfaces, uh, complexity of interfaces that's that's been used. For the brownfield project, we have to make a descriptive model of the e situation and uh, the sole situation, the the, syst the situation you like to to reach after uh, the design and build. And the analysis models are then uh, pointed at the delta between the e and the sole situation. And that will be the, the definition of the change of the system in the in the brownfield uh, projects for the brownfield projects. <coughs> Users are, um, are used to uh, to to live with different different visualizations or different notations. So we we have to give them some graphical uh, um, information and in graphical uh, reports, charts, and matrices. That's uh, what they use at the moment, what they normally do that in Visio and in, uh, <coughs> when, uh, in actual, these kind of tools they use for these kind of, uh, of visualizations. So at the end, we have to define all the different kind of diagrams that we use to do these visualizations that uh, that we seen before. Uh, we have some generic um, diagrams uh, from CSML, uh, like the requirement or activity diagrams or the state diagrams. And we have to uh, do, to add some new uh, domain-specific uh, uh, diagrams uh, for project and technical management organization diagrams for the, the safety uh, Engineers, uh, we have to, uh, and the safety manager, we have to define the hazard, uh, failure mode and effect, and the faults to analyze diagrams. For the mechanical engineers and the instrumentation engineers, we have to, uh, we have to, uh, to, to build the, the PND diagrams, the A1 line schemes for the electrical engineers, for the VNV verification, validation, and testing group, we have testing diagrams and testing toolboxes. For the, the configuration manager and the integration managers, we have uh, built the implementation diagrams. Uh, for the batch industry, uh, we have to do, based on the standard, ISO standard, uh, physical recipe and process diagrams. And for the automation engineers, we have to build uh, function block diagrams. Uh, that all these diagrams are needed to uh, make an integrated design of a system from the different uh, domain perspectives. 
So, and what are the tools then that we can use, that we use? Uh, enterprise architect, pro cloud itself and collaborate. Uh, the choice is there because uh, the enterprise architect is, is widely used within the Netherlands. By a lot of companies are doing also the design at the moment. So at the end we have uh, make uh, some some kind of uh, overview of uh, of the whole Sigma work uh, and what we have integrated within that we have uh, design design standard the design processes uh, design method modeling guideline for the management we have uh, integrated uh, issues change risks uh, schedule design issues and deviations. We have built up uh, a library with uh, domain specific languages, reusable uh, model elements, and document templates based on a uh, framework uh, from uh, six uh, different models that can be used uh, with all together, but also uh, module wise for uh, everything. And we built it in the application enterprise architect, both cloud server and global. So in the next uh, slides, I will give you some uh, yeah, some overviews of, uh, of examples of uh, uh, of Sigma. So to give you some uh, yeah, some nice views of it and how it can be used. So for the process, we have uh, have defined different the different processes. Uh, we build it up in uh, BPNM with this different uh, descriptions. So uh, and a diff different abstraction uh, level of the process itself. So for support for quality management, configuration management, and um, information management, uh, we have to uh, to the, the processes for the design engineer, system architect, domain experts. We have uh, set up uh, processes with descriptions how they can use it, and for the modeling for supporting the, the design process. We also define the different roles um, who are intent to, uh, to, uh, to do these kind of processes and activities within it. Uh, all the different uh, products they have to deliver also in, integrated within uh, in the, in, in the process model. <laughs> we, have to find, uh, we have to define a method so that people can use the, for doing these kind of projects. So in the vertical slides you see uh, from an operational uh, view to the, to the implementation, that's the configuration that's really outside the field. And on the horizontal line you see requirements, functions, uh, structure, verification, validation, analyzing, simulation, and also how, um, how these uh, different artifacts are related to each other. Uh, we set up a, a working guideline, so it's nice that you have a process, uh, but we have uh, to give them some, some more hands-on hand uh, uh, experience, how they can use uh, the, the different uh, <coughs> models uh, in, uh, when they're doing the engineering part. So it's all uh, built from uh, uh, the same structure, so we have a generic description of, uh, of the working guideline. Uh, what kind of uh, diagrams, toolboxes are used uh, per activity? We have uh, a description, and the the different relationships are used within the, within the working guideline. We have set up uh, a modeling guideline, so it's nice that people can see how uh, how they have to uh, model it and what kind of artifacts they're using to to model. Uh, these, these uh, systems itself. After that, we have uh, have set up uh, a model validation guideline. So different uh, checkboxes that you can use to uh, to validate your your model if it built in the right way, not if the 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 the, the design itself is very good. That's uh, what we done in the reviews from a verification point of view, but is the model uh, built up in the right way uh, according to the to the to the 
uh, model guidelines and working instructions. <clears throat> so, after that, we have uh, set up a framework from the different uh, different models, uh, operational model uh, where we where we can uh, can uh, define all the from the users uh, point of view, a functional model where we can do uh, all the, the analysis failure modes, uh, for example, and we can set up a system arch step to structure, uh, define the different functions for the different uh, system elements. Uh, different uh, state, every block has a uh, state, state machine and the interaction between all the system elements and the ex external system that's, uh, that we have to deal with. <coughs> In the technology model, uh, you can model uh, all the uh, technology uh, variants that you can use to, uh, to realize uh, the <coughs> Elements that you define in the system structure at the functional level. And we have an implementation model where we do the configuration uh, was really outside. So that's what we see in the projects, the configuration management database. And we have an, uh, a library for uh, reuse uh, of elements and uh, patterns and these kind of things that you can reuse within the project or uh, over the projects. So, as I mentioned before, we have uh, defined additional uh, diagrams. You see a list of it, and uh, every diagram has, has its own um, toolbox. So, every domain specific diagram has also a domain specific toolbox. Uh, and we set up um, a common, uh, as, as what you see also in, in Enterprise Architect, a common uh, a toolbox with uh, different uh, model elements and different relationships that we can, that we, that's what we miss within the, the today uh, version of Enterprise Architect. <laughs> so, it, uh, some kind, you see some examples of uh, the different domain. Uh, Diagrams that we uh, that we use, uh, uh, pipe management limitation, uh, industrial automation, function box, fault tree analysis, failure modes, and uh, for the energy the online schemes. And for every element that we have uh, uh, defined, that we have uh, integrity values, uh, the asset information that you can fill in. <coughs> So you see in the, the, the structure of the operational model, uh, what are the actors of the system? Uh, analyzes the hazards, capabilities, uh, in operational interaction within uh, uh, sequence diagrams, uh, scenarios, operational states, uh, reference, stakeholder requirements, and uh, user goals that you have uh, to reach. And you see the operational capabilities and system uh, an example of it. <clears throat> In the functional model, uh, we build up uh, the functional uh, flow of the of the system. What are the functions in, uh, and and the functional breakdown? That's in a hierarchical uh, breakdown of all the functions that we have defined. Uh, in the analysis, you see, uh, uh, for example, uh, a failure mode and effect analysis. Uh, the architecture of the system itself, the properties. In the te <coughs> technology model, <coughs> what, uh, what are the, tech the technological solutions that we have uh, uh, that, that you can bring in uh, related to, uh, <coughs> to the functional model? You see some, some slides of it uh, from, from a technical point of view. And you see uh, left the, the, the functional uh, uh, breakdown uh, and the internal block diagrams, for example, for, uh, <clears throat> for it. We have an implementation model. Um, 
that's 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 what we miss in the in, the, in most of the frameworks that that we use. Um, implementation model is what really outside of what will be intended to be outside. Um, so you see the Kubernetes configuration of, of all the equipment, data networks, energy distribution, um, cables and, and piping, uh, pipe means notation, uh, all the interfaces and all the different testing. <clears throat> so we only use uh, some uh, new relationships over there. We have a configure because you can, uh, if you build an open system, you don't build it uh, in a big bang. You build it in different configurations. Um, <clears throat> so every configuration can be then uh, related to a certain point of time. <clears throat> we can um, uh, we can say uh, some kind of automation functionality, for example, will be hosted by um, some automated system. But it can also be uh, uh, hosted in this, the, the object itself, the equipment itself. Um, for example, uh, the power supply of, an, of a pump can be implemented somewhere. And you have to give where your equipment is stored. And that's where you use the, the, the re locating relationship. <laughs> you see uh, from, uh, uh, an example of, uh, of a real project. That we, uh, that we are building up a uh, pumping station within the region. That's uh, the, the blue uh, ball that you see in the, in the geographical uh, picture, all the pumping stations over there. Uh, and what the sewage treatment plant, uh, you see the, the, the high level uh, structure and, uh, and, uh, and the different designs of it. <clears throat> For piping and instrumentation, we, uh, we have. Uh, Set up a, <clears throat> a structure for uh, for it, and we use there the, the reference to different uh, cable types, uh, fire class types. Uh, you can relate it to uh, to the different cabinets. Uh, we did not build it with the normal uh, relationships because this is very easy to fill in for uh, for the integration parts. <clears throat> we have to uh, to give the, the technical management and project management uh, a management model that we can use for example Scrum, uh, all the different uh, roles they, they use, uh, but also uh, the work breakdown uh, package if you if you like to use it, all the changes, uh, phasing, uh, deviations, all the kind of things you can fill in uh, within the project related to all the things. So we set up also a uh, new <clears throat> relationships for the organization so that you can uh, build up a, a, a ROSCI uh, uh, table for the products and the work packages. Uh, you see an example of it. Uh, we set up uh, a library with, uh, for different products. So for every kind of system, uh, the energy, uh, CCTV, uh, intercom, um, automation, um, uh, fire and uh, uh, this thing is uh, we set up all the different kind of products that you have to deliver in the different phases of the of the of engineering uh, we set up uh, uh, basic uh, design reports so for the design documents a stakeholder requirement uh, a specification or a system element uh, description that we can reuse over the project. We set up a, a, a set of reusable units, quantity kinds and constraints that you can reuse within the, in the different projects. And we, we use uh, collaborate for the non uh, enterprise hosting users. And we deliver them uh, not only basic collaborate uh, uh, functionality like uh, reviews and discussion, but also give them a special um, dashboards. This example of a uh, dashboard that we have done uh, built for, uh, for a project from a management point of view, where you can see your schedule and progress, uh, all the different changes made in, um, from, uh, from a customer, uh, project risk, and the project deviations. So at the end, we build up uh, 
uh, a work measuring can work together from one single source of truth. You see an example from the office. So what we already we have uh, yet said, we have to update uh, the working guideline. It's not finished at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> but we, from new insights from projects that we are using, uh, the modeling guidelines we have to update, the profiles with new insights. Maybe we have to change or maybe we have to uh, extend with new. And we have to extend the library with uh, common standards, reusable uh, elements, re 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 requirements that we can use within different projects. Um, and reusable uh, constraint blocks with all the calculations. Um, and hopefully uh, do some kind of simulation. But what we see is the market is not uh, really ready for it uh, to do with that at the end. Okay, there was there was a presentation, a short uh, insight of uh, what what uh, what is the market where we're working, uh, how did you develop uh, the work by itself, Sigma, and, and how we use it uh, within the different projects. <laughs> so, if you have uh, any questions. Uh, Uh, I thank Ian for, uh, on behalf of everyone for making this session a wonderful one. As we said earlier, uh, now it's time for question and answer. And I will be reading out the questions from the chat window and Jan will be answering them. Uh, a question from Jan, Johan. Okay. How do you create and manage electrical drawings like circuit diagrams? Uh, okay, we, we make uh, we make um, uh, a profile for the, the PMDs, and we use uh, ShapeScript uh, for uh, for these kind of things. Okay, thank you. Uh, the question is also posted in your dedicated cha Teams channel. You can also answer there. And another question from Johan. Uh, many good ideas. Uh, can you describe what you have used in some uh, some real project? Yeah, we use uh, we use parts of it uh, in form in form of, uh, previous projects, and what we, what we have done all the all the all the things that we have done in within projects, we have to combine it uh, into uh, to a single workbench. That's what we have uh, achieved. So it's based on on really on uh, yeah. On, uh, on today's practice. Okay, you also requested. Uh, can you can we download the slides? Uh, it would be easier to read the finer details. Yeah, I, I will. I will put it after the presentation. I will place it in uh, in, the, in the Teams environment. Okay, thank you, thank you. And how do you structure and and tag and name data? Are you using yeah, ISO 81346 with one with parts 1, 2, 10, and 12? Yeah, this, this is also a very nice question. Uh, uh, there's, there's a discussion within the infrastructure uh, domain about um, uh, tech data. That's, um, and we, when it's finished, we, I, will, I will integrate it in, um, in the environment as a tech name. It's also available as a single tag name, but you are not uh, not um, you you don't have to use it in, uh, uh, according to the ISO standard. You can use it in that way, but you don't have to. Uh, but we can integrate it. Oh, thank you, Ian. Uh, we'll uh, wait a couple of minutes for questions and we'll move to the Teams channel. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending uh, the presentation. Okay. Uh, thanks, Ian. And thanks to everyone for your time and support throughout the session. Hope it's very informative and gives a deeper insight into the topic. Uh, now, Ian will be available in MS Teams to have a detailed discussion and answer more questions. 
the link to the ms teams channel is posted in the chat window for your quick reference if anyone is having any difficulties in connecting to teams please reach us at uh, the chat window or write us at registrations at eaglobalsummit.com thanks once again everyone and looking forward to host you all in another wonderful session thanks Yana. thank you thank you everybody bye bye thank you